All right, welcome to ATN News. Now, I put this report out four days ago. Seven plus to eight plus earthquake starting at the Cascadia. That means it's the pressure is leaving here, if it leaves here, and it'll go on around the plate, transfer, or a lot of go toward the east, and some can go down toward the other side. All right, now this is a warning seven plus to eight plus. I didn't stir you wrong. Now, for one thing, let me explain. My power has been out for four days now. I don't know what took them four days, but there was some big trees and a big line. A wind came through here that, you know, that we don't never see. It was just like a steady hurricane wind, and it just rushed through, bent all the trees over, and it laid trees over all the way in the line. But it only got them between 25 houses. That's the only ones that was out without power in my area was 25 homes. It took them four days to fix it. It was a mess, though. It really was. Okay, now, like I said, I didn't stir you wrong. It's been four days. Now, let's go look at something else. This here was a 6.5, and I reported it right after I showed that update, looking for a 7 plus to an 8 plus. Now, let's go check out something else. Now, after we had the 6.5, which was downgraded to a 6.3, 18.1 miles deep, and then a 2, and a 6.6 .6 around Tonga. Right after that, the next day, 69.8 miles deep. Alright, now with these two, right here and right here, 6.5 and a 6.6, .6, if both of these if the pressure hadn't went on around the fault here and it all hit this area, it would have been a 7 plus to an 8 plus earthquake. So it wasn't leading you wrong. Now we got another 6.0 or greater heading around the plate, getting ready to lead the Cascadia. That'll hit in the next few days. And the Cascadia got a, a little bit of activity, it got 3.3. .3, uh, 2.6, another 2.6, and a 2.7. Now today we had a 3.1 at Tahama Reserve. I don't know how you pronounce that. But anyway, California, minus 0 0.5 miles deep. And down here, the reason I'm looking at this seven days in advance, you see where the build-up is, Puerto Rico? Okay, we're building up at Puerto Rico. That backs up pressure. Then we was building up down through South Carolina, I mean South America, and that is backing up pressure. It can't come on through because of all this activity going on. And we had this 5.1 Panama come down through here, but... The other earthquakes, since they can't get through here, they got to go this way. So they'll go around the plate and over this way. Now we got the 6.0 or greater coming. I don't know where it's going to hit. All I know is it's leaving the Cascadia. And from looking at this, this is a build up and over toward Puerto Rico is a build up and Panama is a build up. So that would cause the pressure to go on down through here. Now, if we come on down through here, it would cause a larger quake down through here. That's what we got to watch. And another thing that we're looking at here, I know it's showing seven days. Some people don't like that, but, you know, you got to look at it to see what you're looking at here. We had one over here, 2.9, west southwest of Gladstone, Stone, New Jersey. And one up in Kansas, 2.7, Solomon. But we'll be looking at the new major here in a moment. But when you look at these earthquakes and you see the weak spots, we got these weak spots here. This one here is not a weak spot. It wasn't, but it is now. And we got all this activity. So it's hard to come over into this. So it's going to hit here before it goes over in here. And some people ask on my channel, am I using some other earthquakes uh, routine, how they do theirs and everything? No. And you said, I mean, one said, is it, a, or are you just predicting? 
I'm looking at the signs, watching the signs of the earth. I guess you would call that prediction. Now, what time this was going on, this is a 3.2 around Hawaii. Last seven days, oh, sorry about the flash, forgot all about that. Last seven days, and we go back to 30 days. I never seen this on here when it happened. We had this one right on Mauna Kea, 3.2, 14.5 miles deep. A 2.5 on the other side, 25.8 miles deep. Now we're having all this activity going along Hawaii, and tonight, this is the small quakes, 2.1, 2.1, that's about the biggest quakes here. All right, now look at the 2.5s and greater, nothing. So we got another 6.5, I mean 6.0 or greater on the move, leaving the Cascadia right now. And then we got this over here. New major, it's not showing any activity, which we should have seen something. Hawaii should have seen more activity than what we're seeing. So we could increase around through here in these areas and over toward New York. And let's look around here. Okay, Alaska, not too much going on up that way either. Most of these are small quakes. That's a 3.5, but most of these are small. So what's going on here? You know, you got pressure build up, build up down through here within the last seven days. So we got something moving. Now, on this, a fault line. What causes a fault line? I mean, you know, you got to look at what causes a fault. Let's go look at that on the map. See if I got it up here. I must have cut it off on accident a few moments ago, but can you see this? I know the fault goes on over, but this here, starting down here around Louisiana, coming up, and you got the fault, a fault going through here too, and you got it coming around, and then up, and then up through Pennsylvania, and right on out into Canada. This here is all cracked still yet, and this is being pushed, so, you know, pushed on. And that's what causes these big ridges and big mountains, the Appalachian Mountains, like I live in. We got going through here. I'm up north, though, just north of all of this, not dead center of it. Don't want no earthquakes either. But anyway, what causes fault lines? Continents moving together. This is a continent that moved together. That caused this big chunk down here, Florida and all that. It's continents. This moved in together. So, you know, this could, something could occur pretty soon around through this fault line right here. It's one of the main faults for the east. It is the main for the east. Now, on Hawaii, let's go look at the fire map. Let's look at something here. Okay, uh, first, on the Long Valley Caldera, we got a fire going on. And that's not good. Then... Here's the anomalies coming across. Let's go back to the 27th and look at Hawaii. 27th. I was just showing you that earthquake on Mauna Kea. I know it was in the past, but, you know, we got to put all this together or you can't figure out what's going on. This is Mauna Kea, a hot spot on the 27th. Now, both of these popped up at once. Kilauea. And it's not on Kilauea. It's on the side right here and a little bit north northwest but anyway hot spot Mauna Kea we had an earthquake there here a little bit ago what caused the hot spot now let's just go to let's drop back to the 25th nothing 26th nothing again and 27th there's the hot spots 28th so you know that that shows there was activity and there's the 29th there were activity here if you didn't know it on the 27th 
and this is the 29th. So that's another spot where some of the pressure may have went from that 8 plus we were seeing. But, you know, we already seen enough really from that. Both of those would have caused a large quake. Now, let's go look at something else here. The anomalies real quick. Now, this is anomalies, like I was saying a moment ago. You got the darker red coming in. And this thick part here. And I showed some things on my channel on an update here a little bit ago. Uh, what about the heat and what's destroying the earth, things like that. Well, you can see what kind of outfit that is made that will go in a diagonal way and it will move heat across the U.S. and they can do that. They have the stuff to do that. But anyway, even if they ain't doing it, either way, it's heat and that's all that matters. We'll go back to the 25th. You can see it right here. And over here, just look for the dark spots, the darker ones. And... Let's go to the 26th. You can watch it spread out. And then we go 27th. It's moved over. Going into Florida. Just right here. In this area. Now let's go 28th. Now look. All, about all Florida is covered. And it's going up this way. The new major. is In this area is pretty well staying pretty hot and the Great Lakes I showed the heat map on that I mean the soil temperature all the hot all the heat was over in this way now we go to the 29th you can see the Great Lakes right here starting out at Texas and that's where big storms has been coming from and while well, it hit us pretty hard and us up in the mountains I know it had to hit everyone else that one gust of wind just one one big long, I mean, it just kept going and going, you know, for a couple moments. Not too long, but it seemed like forever. All right, let's go look at something else. Okay, on the new major fault line, uh, you got in the fault zone, you got some of the scientists suggest that the faulting of the NMSZ is the result of an underground hot spot. A section of Earth's upper mantle that upwells to melt through the crust. Then we got down here. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay, the USGS has predicted that for an earthquake of a magnitude 7.5 to 8.0 probability for occurrence is approximately... 7 to 10 percent over the next 50 years. That's for the new major fault zone. Okay, here's another thing about the new major. The movement is, an, is on old faults in response to comp, compressive stress related to plate motions. You know, the only way it can have a plate is its continents goes together. So, you know, and I think it was 1811 to 7.7 .7 or 1812. I forgot which one. It is hard to keep up with this. Yeah, when that 7.7 .7 hit, it caused a it caused the Mississippi River to run backwards for a short time. And the new major hasn't had any activity on it in the last few days. So, you know, be careful in that area because. We got that 6.0 grader leaving, and it could go on around the plate. If not, it could hit through here somewhere. I always warn because I do know it's coming, and, you know, it's best to watch for it on the main faults because it can be bigger. We still haven't seen a 7 plus to an 8 plus, and we have seen this happen before. When we was looking for a 7 plus, we would get a couple of sixes, and we still ended up with a 7 plus. So still watch for it just in case. And, you know, I was going to get back on here the next night, but like I said, power went down, but nothing I could do. We lost everything. I mean, even four days, we've been all evening cleaning out deep freezers and everything. It's crazy, but it just happens. 
if the winds come through here uh, I hate it for the other ones that's in open land because it had to be a real big disaster and it's it's sad to see that it hit that hard in other places because like I said I'm in the mountains we don't get winds like that alright I'll see you next time everybody stay safe watch for that 6.0 or greater it's getting ready to leave the Cascadia and if we continue getting earthquakes over here then that means that it's releasing pressure on the plate pushing across and it'll hit over here but when we stop getting earthquakes over here when we stop getting them then you know 6.0 is greater and the Cascadia is in danger even more but you can still hit any time so keep your eyes open alright everybody stay safe and we'll be watching